everyone. Welcome to worship on this sixth Sunday in the Easter season. I'm so glad you have joined us this morning. Please follow the bulletin and announcements and a number of informational things about what's going on in the community are available in your announcements. Um, one of them is something that I'm going to try and do uh, over the next couple of weeks. We've tried a Wednesday night Compline every other week and uh, that doesn't seem to work for most people's schedules. So instead, I think I'm going to begin to creating uh, begin to create some uh, small, short videos for prayer and reflection to give to you midweek in between these Sunday services. Uh, maybe a two, three, four minute video, a, a pause for prayer and poetry. And it'll have some music that Mary Therese has provided, um, a favorite sacred poem or prayer from my collection, uh, and just a, a moment to pause in prayer for you midweek. So look for some of those as I begin to produce those, hopefully um, once a week or so. Uh, a number of other announcements are there also, but this morning I invite you, uh, if you are new to our community, if you have found us uh, online somehow through a link a friend shared or maybe on Facebook or YouTube, I would invite you just to introduce yourself uh, in the comments, uh, give us your name or where you're from, and we'd be delighted to get to know you. Uh, know that you can go to our website, epiphanyep.org, and subscribe to our weekly newsletter. It comes out every Friday morning with information and details about our ministries and worship. And then on Sunday morning, uh, we send an email to everyone with the links to Sunday worship and to our Zoom coffee hour. So speaking of coffee hour, I hope to see many of you there this morning at 10 a.m. Follow the link in your Sunday e-news to join us by video or the information about uh, joining us by phone with a phone number and passcode. So we hope everyone can participate in one way or the other. Um, we miss you and it would be good to see your face and hear your voice. Finally, I welcome you to this space. I hope you can find a quiet place in your home this morning uh, to sit, to rest, and to take in worship and to offer up your prayers to God. Together, let us worship the living God. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ for the world we sing, the world to Christ we bring, with loving zeal, the poor and them that mourn, the faint and overborn, sin sick and sorrow worn, whom Christ doth heal. God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love toward you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. This is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, 
I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor, he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Bless our God, you peoples. Make the voice of his praise to be heard. Who holds our souls in life and will not allow our feet to slip? For you, O oh God, have proved us. You have tried us just as silver is tried. You brought us into the snare. You laid heavy burdens upon our backs. You let enemies ride over our heads. We went through fire and water but you brought us out into a place of refreshment. I will enter your house with burnt offerings and will pay you my vows, which I promised with my lips and spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. Come and listen, all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he has done for me. I called out to him with my mouth and his praise was on my tongue. If I had found evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But in truth, God has heard me. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, who has not rejected my prayer, nor withheld his love from me. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides in you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I offer this to you in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This Sunday, we come ever closer to the Feast of Pentecost in two weeks, when the disciples receive the Holy Spirit and Jesus sends them forth into the world. But this Sunday, we begin that journey toward Pentecost with Jesus introducing the idea of the Holy Spirit, the advocate, to be with the disciples when he no longer will be. And it has me understand, really, that the disciples are at the beginning of a new journey that they don't know the end of. And Jesus is beginning to talk to them about what it will be like. And there's an idea in the Christian monastic tradition that was originally a Zen Buddhist idea this idea of beginner's mind, of approaching a new journey or a new task with the mind and the perspective of a beginner. 
with a sense of openness and curiosity without any preconceptions. If you have ever started a new thing in your life when you've started a new job or a new relationship or moved to a new place, you've had to have a little bit of beginner's mind. You didn't know or were familiar with how things worked at the new job or what the new neighborhood was like. You had to have a sense of curiosity and openness. You had no preconceived notions about it. But as we get more familiar with a place and a job and a neighborhood, we lose that. We become used to it. Life becomes rote. And it occurs to me right now that we are all living in a time where we are having to cultivate a bit of beginner's mind. We are in a completely new situation where things that we had been doing by rote for most of our lives, things like going to the grocery store or leaving our house for a walk or going to the park, be done without thinking. But now it requires more curiosity. It requires asking ourselves more questions about how many people will there be? Will it be crowded? I have to remember to bring my mask. And they're new experiences. And as we keep doing these new things, we'll get more used to it. But for now, I wonder if we can't adopt this spiritual discipline of a beginner's mind in the way that Jesus was trying to help the disciples be open to their new journey. He was promising them, you will have an advocate, you will have the very spirit of God in you, dwelling in you and among you to accompany you on this journey. So have a sense of curiosity. Have a sense of openness to the possibility of each day and take each day one day at a time. Those are good spiritual disciplines for us right now as well. The Apostle Paul has adopted those spiritual disciplines as he has gone to meet the people of the, um, of the city of Athens. In our reading from Acts this morning, he makes a speech to the Athenians standing at the Areopagus, the gathering place in Athens, and he tells them about the beginner's mind that he has had as he's walked around the city. He says, I've observed your city, I've listened, I've looked at your statues, and I've noticed that you have a lot of statues to unknown gods. And I've come to tell you that the God I know is not unknown. The God I know has a name. The God I know has a face in Jesus Christ. And so I think Paul was very good at having this kind of beginner's mind attitude where he observed carefully the new places he was and the new people he was meeting. And then he used that information to then proclaim the good news of God in Christ to them. That God indwells all people. That God's love is available for everyone. And that God is the very life and breath in all things, Paul tells the Athenians. So Paul was good at this beginner's mind idea. And I've had to adopt a beginner's mind at different times in my life when I've started new journeys. And this one seems particularly appropriate, this chapter of our lives, to have a beginner's mind. And I wrote in my newsletter article this week on Friday morning that in many ways, probably in most every way, we cannot go back to what was. Even as much as we want to recover the things that we have lost and the ways of being and the the familiar places and the familiar modes of life and the familiar ways of being church. I don't think we really can go backwards. And in fact, God calls us always to a new day and to move forward because God is with us in every future moment and we have nothing to fear there. But I also know that God is calling us to a beginner's mind in this time because I don't think we would want to go backwards. There's an author that I read this week that talked about this very idea. And I wanna read you part of what she says. She says, right now we are keeping account of time by love, for that is how the saints kept account of time. And we are resisting the desire to go back to the way things were because that way is marked by social and economic inequality that has made the burden of this virus fall hardest on the most disadvantaged. And the way things were is marked by a healthcare system that leaves so many unprotected. 
and it's marked by the ridiculously low pay that people doing the most necessary jobs receive. None of this can be accounted for by love, and so we cannot go back to it. These things have been revealed to us in this time, and so we can only go forward to right the wrongs of the past, to make equal the injustices and the inequalities, so that everyone truly does have enough. There truly is justice in what all of us earn for the work that we do. And we are learning to remember in this time that our common life, as our prayers say, depend upon one another's toil. We've learned how intricately woven all of our lives are and how much we depend on people in society whom we have often overlooked. So I invite us to a kind of beginner's mind and I think God would invite us to that kind of beginner's mind that looks around and wonders in this day, in this moment, where is the Holy Spirit moving me? Beginner's mind is a, a habit of listening, of being attentive and aware, of letting our preconceptions go, and in very many ways, letting our images of the past, in some sense, be held more lightly, so that God can lead us into a new thing that is unfolding. And we can have this beginner's mind each day, day by day, we don't have to look too far into the future. We don't need to know what the road looks like too far down. But a beginner's mind is a practice of this day because Jesus has promised us that he will not leave us orphaned, but the Holy Spirit will be with us each step of the way as we hold this prayerful posture of openness and curiosity so that each of our days may be marked by love. Amen. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For the leaders of all churches. For all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, remembering, remembering especially Richard Messier and Yvonne Mary Bowyer, in whose memory a donation has been made to Epiphany, and all who have died from COVID, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us pray in the words our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. behind us, peace under our feet, peace within us, peace over us, let all around us be peace. May the Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless, preserve, and keep you. Amen. Let us go forth rejoicing in the power of the risen Christ. Hallelujah! Hallelujah!